involved. They say they need the public's help figuring out what happened. More than a million votes cast with two and a half weeks still to go to Election Day. We're getting a better idea of exactly when counties will begin counting absentee ballots. First United Family says there is no explanation why anyone would target their child. Bray was 13 years old. He was shot and killed in front of his home. The family says the gunman never said a word before opening fire. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens has updates in Clayton County where the search is still on for that gunman tonight. And this is a tough one. The family says they are devastated after watching 13 year old Brian Zavala murdered right before their eyes. And the family says they had no idea why. They killed my son for nothing. I don't owe anybody anything. I don't have enemies. I work every day from five in the morning to seven o'clock at night. Santiago Zavala is overwhelmed with grief after watching his 13 year old son, Brian, gunned down just feet away from him on the family's front lawn on Willow Lane Thursday night. His son killed in the shooting. The family's car left riddled with bullets. And he looked at my son and he just shot him. <laughs> as he spoke to us. Brian's 16-year-old brother, Hayes. A car pulled up on the... and the shooter came out with the shotgun. There, pointed the shotgun at my... shot my brother in the face. And... The... By the time... It didn't seem that he had like, or, or a chance to, to win. Ryan was a happy teen who loved was a student at Kendrick Middle School. Tormented by this unexpected tragedy. Uh, because he I'm trying to be as um, helped him with something. Um, strong. Police have not released a and the family says the gunman never his life. The shooter didn't even say I want uh, I'm assaulting you. He just killed Shout my brother and the family in just about a week. But haven't released a motive yet. Fund me page hoping to raise. We have that information as well as a site. Square Mall tonight. Atlanta police say shots. During an attempted robbery, we're told no into custody. DeKalb County has been missing now for a year. Old and wheelchair bound because he's paralyzed. Missing last September. The next day, items were found in Gwinnett County with one of his. They don't have a suspect right now, but do not. His two daughters are pleading, sending a message to their father. Help and find you, so don't give up. Know that you love us. And investigators say, which makes this situation more urgent. Up late at 11 on our sister station. Tonight, a man has been arrested in the murder of Atlanta police arrested 30 year old and drone footage of the arrest and inside an apartment off North Camp Creek shot multiple times in the West Atlanta. Police have not established best known for roles in several spike story out of White County, a 46-year-old mother 
Georgia with her family. For Randall was hiking Yona Mountain. On Tuesday, she fell more than from the side of the mountain. EMS and train to be able to retrieve her body. Not injured. Arrest warrant. Shooting in Kennesaw, maybe gang related. 14 people in all are facing. Cobb County police say two groups got on Sunday night. It ended in gunfire. Teen is accused of pulling the trigger. Three adults are accused of encouraging the teen gun get away. Falcons have returned to the practice facility following a positive. Prior to that test on Tuesday, the rookie defensive tackle Marlon Davidson was just right now Sunday's game against the Vikings. In Macon, hoping to convert some Georgia votes. This is happening live at the middle of Macon. This is a big stop as the a poll we've been telling you about shows the president points. You can watch this speech live on 11alive.com. Remaining in Michigan today with stops in Detroit. Senator Kamala Harris is staying put this positive for COVID-19. Ed, without ever being face to face, Part in competing town halls on different second presidential debate. The president's COVID-19 diagnosis raised safety rest his health on NBC with Savannah Guthrie. No, no, but I take a lot of tests. Okay. Debate. Uh, uh, possibly I did. Dominated the conversation at both Town Hall on ABC with George Stephanopoulos with trust a vaccine approved. If the body of scientists say, and there it's, it's been tested, yes, I would take it. I'd encourage people to take it. Announced white supremacy during his town hall of power if he loses the election have already cast their ballots with just a state's office reports that voter turnout is all percent from 2016. 2,000 people voted early and in person. More than 687 five days into advance voting from 2016 and the last so far, 620 and accepted up 700. Following all of those numbers, you got all of that. That's the headline of all of this. Today, one of the Newton County, President Trump, 2016, with just over 50%. Surrounding politics right now, we asked for feel is dividing the country and where they and we feel that we're not being but they don't see it that way you know, that's been going on but some guys we must all come together as one vice president as the share 11 alive is where Atlanta speaks know what you think about issues us your thoughts directly at 404-885-7600 under a state emergency rule starting next week counties can start scanning absentee ballots if they choose we reached out to several counties to check on their plan so here's what they're telling us 
Cherokee, Cobb, Gwinnett and Paulding all plan to start opening absentee ballot envelopes on Monday and scan the ballots. DeKalb and Rockdale will also open envelopes Monday, but DeKalb will wait until Tuesday to scan and Rockdale until October 26th. Coweta County is waiting until Tuesday to open and scan and Barrow tells us it will start processing ballots on October 26th. It's important to note none of the counties will actually count the votes until the polls close on November 3rd. We've heard from a lot of you out there wondering how to track your absentee ballots after they've been mailed in, taken to a drop box or to a county registrar's office. The state says the best way to track the status is to use the ballot track system. You can learn more about how to do that in our special voting guide that we've created for you on 11alive.com slash vote. A man accused of trying to kidnap a woman and her baby has a criminal record dating back decades. Next, why some state officials believe he is still dangerous. Atlanta Public Schools now making a decision on in-person learning. The district's explanation coming up. Don't forget, we are streaming right now. 11 Alive's YouTube channel, ever present, always there. It is there that you can see Jennifer Bellamy <laughs> and you can join in on the conversation. We have more 11 Alive news in prime time after these important messages. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you first responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit... A man wanted by police tonight, accused of carjacking a young mother, forcing her to jump out of the moving car with her baby. Today, 11 Alive's Deborah Tuff discovered the suspect had recently been released on probation. You can tell from the video that the suspect in this case was walking into the gas station and as he's walking in, he clearly looks over and sees the victim standing by herself and he decides that that was an opportune time. An opportune time to force a young mom at gunpoint in the backseat of her car, punching her several times in the process. Her baby girl, a one-year-old, sound asleep in her car seat. The Gwinnett County mom did the desperate and unthinkable, jumping out of the moving car with her daughter still strapped inside her car seat. It happened this past August at the Exxon station on Boggs Road. It was until yesterday that police identified the suspect as Quentin Rogers, but they're still searching for him. Criminal records show Rogers has a rap sheet dating back to 2001, just a month before the Gwinnett mom was carjacked. Records show Rogers was released on probation and police say they're working hard to make an arrest now. Obviously, with the type of crime that this was and the randomness involved, we believe that he is a dangerous person. We do consider him to be dangerous, so, and obviously we are concerned about him doing this sort of thing again. Police say the young mom who is terrified to interview took the correct safety measures, making sure she was parking in a high traffic, well-lit part of the station. While she did the right things, 
there are times when even while you do the right thing, you know, crime can still find you. And now police are trying to find Quentin Rogers. If you know where he is, call Gwinnett County Police. Students in Atlanta public schools won't be heading back to in-person classes at all in 2020. The district announced it will delay plans for a return to face-to-face -face learning at least until January. In an online post, Superintendent Dr. Lisa Herring says the move comes after community coronavirus data had begun to trend in the wrong direction. She says she consulted with public health officials, healthcare experts, and stakeholders to make the decision. The district had planned for an October 26th in-person return for some of its students, but that date was tentatively based on community transition. Meanwhile, students at Banneker High School spent the day learning from home. That's after COVID-19 cases shut down in-person classes. Fulton County school officials say six people on campus tested positive. Students will be able to return to in-person learning on Monday. This is the second day in a row that new COVID-19 that's significantly higher than our average of about 1,200 cases per day. New cases of the virus are up 5% from last week. Georgia's Department of Public Health also reported 64 deaths today. That's double our current average. It's also the highest number that we have seen in three weeks. As the number of coronavirus cases continue to increase across the country, the effects of the virus are being felt in sports. Here's NBC's Jay Gray. With COVID-19 rushing across the country, many college and NFL teams are struggling on defense right now. Look, let's take the time out. Let's dial up the right play. We but the best game plan for coronavirus just isn't clear. Without complete total bubbling, which is not practical for most of these football teams, there's a great chance that every game that's scheduled will not find a place to be played before the year is done. A handful of NCAA games have been postponed this weekend. Georgia and Alabama will still play. Uh, at this point, I'm completely asymptomatic, feel fine. But legendary lines after testing positive for the virus. Locker room, many doctors say a spike. This is a historic, not seen in our own civilization. That this is something that's serious. And all you need to do is look at the number. Overwhelming. More than 8 million cases. of those deadly. And the score of the virus off and on the field. But again. That frontal system moved through earlier. Noted there really wasn't any measurable rain, but we move on through and now we're watching those that air gets pulled out of Canada across that's to our northwest. We have and what that means is we're going to have a really nice fall. A nice Friday once the clouds moved out of degrees cooler than we were yesterday. Yesterday eight and so we were below the average of 73 the year 54 for a low so above for our low temperature and by the way after all the rain we had over last weekend we still have an 18 inch surplus so even though we're going to be dry most of this week we do have a good deal of surplus in the bucket so we're looking at a really nice night out there, but it will get chilly. So grab your jacket if you still have to head out the door to your high school football game. Of course, Team 1-1 going on tonight here at 11 Alive where we cover high school football and temperatures will be dropping. It's going to be a little chilly on those bleachers with temperatures getting down close to 50 degrees by the time things are wrapping up out there on the field. So temperatures will continue to drop as we head into the overnight hours down into the mid 30s in places like Blair's and Ella J uh, over into Helen. It'll be very chilly as well in the upper 30s. will be around 38 in Clayton. We should be around 43 in Duluth, 42 in Marietta and 43 in Peachtree City. Bottom line, this is the coldest temperatures. These are the coldest temperatures we have had since May 10th 
and so it's been many months since we've been this chilly. The heat's going to be kicking on in a lot of houses, I think. So on our Saturday, once we start to warm up, it's going to be beautiful. So I did put a tent on the lithometer uh, just because it's going to be a gorgeous afternoon with temperatures making it into the mid 60s. Sunshine all day long. So it will start out with a chill in the air, but then by the afternoon, we'll see those temperatures still unseasonably cool, but in a sunny spot where you're wind protected, it's going to be really beautiful. It doesn't get much better than this. So uh, we'll see plenty of sunshine on your Saturday and Sunday slightly warmer on Sunday than it will be tomorrow. So still a chilly start on Sunday at 47 degrees and then making up close to 70 by the afternoon. One thing you're going to notice is just how dry it is as those dew points are going to be plunging down into the 20s as we head into the overnight hours. So that's going to allow those temperatures to really drop off. So a couple of cool days ahead for the weekend and then we'll see those temperatures start to get back up close to average by Monday and that warming trend continues into the rest of next week. So uh, a chilly start to our Saturday and then a cool finish mid 60s. A nice day on Sunday as well once we start to warm it up with the sunshine and 11 on the wasometer on Monday an 11 alive day and we are dry for most of the week. No chance of rain until we get to Friday. Educators say the transition to digital learning throughout the pandemic is widening the opportunity gap with Atlanta students. But a nonprofit is working more than ever to help close it and address and address racial equality in education. Cheryl Preheim has more. It's really encouraging to just have somebody that's in your corner. Support is valuable and vital for a student to reach their potential. Next generation men and women is helping close the opportunity gap. I can always come to any anybody that works in action and just talk about whatever I need to talk about and they can provide me with a solution to really arm and equip them with information and knowledge and awareness uh, of what's out there. And Executive Director Phil Olalie says 20,000 Atlanta youth face that gap, receiving less than 10 minutes of guidance counseling a year. The majority get no mentoring. The odds are so stacked up against our young men and women to succeed. In order to really reverse those odds, we have to provide them with the opportunity uh, and the resources and support that they need. NextGen pairs teachers along with college and corporate mentors with underserved students. It's essential during these times. Those odds have only grown recently. This gap is widening and it's gonna widen because of COVID, period. I am concerned about everybody as a whole doing worse in school. They feel like they, like they can't succeed like they're just set up for failure. They need to realize that even in the midst of the pandemic, that their future is still vital and important. Touch points and training that are more important than ever. Really tap into the greatest value that our city has, and it's our youth, it's our young people. We're not going to let them get lost. Next Gen is already working with students in eight high schools with plans to grow. Their students have a 98% graduation rate. They are a landmark. Greeting drivers on Georgia 400, of course, we have seen them for decades. The plans for the King and Queen buildings, what their future will look like. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Rent this space. The Perimeter's King and Queen building are coming under a new leasing company. The landmark towers were sold to a Connecticut-based company in 2015 for just under a half a billion dollars. Our partners, the Atlanta Business Chronicle, say the owners are handling uh, and handing over leasing duties to Cushman and Wakefield. They are hoping to attract companies looking to relocate to Atlanta or with more people working remotely, maybe move some offices to uh, outside the perimeter. Renters could save about $10 per foot by choosing the buildings over comparable space in Midtown. A family still waiting for video that could help answer questions about a young man's death. And as time drags on, their calls for transparency are getting louder. Prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more of slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help. A Cobb County family hoped today would be the day that they would finally see police body cam video after their 17 year old son was shot and killed by police in July. But tonight they tell 11 Alive's Naima Abdullahi that they are still waiting and their calls for transparency are growing increasingly louder. It's been more than 90 days since 17 year old Vincent Truitt was shot and killed by Cobb County police. Since then, his family says they've had more questions than answers. His name was Vincent Truitt. His family says he was an ambitious student, an active church member, a loving son, and now truly missed. 18 hours passed before we were notified. My child died alone. As you know, it's a truly heartbreaking case where you have a young man uh, who by all extensive purposes was a very good young man. Attorney Gerald Griggs says the 17 year old died after being shot in the back twice by police back in July. Here's what the family was initially told. Investigators say a Cobb County police officer spotted a stolen vehicle. GBI says after a traffic stop, the teen got out of the car and ran, but at some point he was shot by police. But the family says investigators have given conflicting information about whether the teen had a gun. I don't really know how you could justify this shooting. And that's why I'm very curious at the fact that after 90 some odd days of having this video, the video has not been made available to the family. Gerald Griggs says that in a private meeting with the family this week, the Cobb County District Attorney says that there should be no issue why the GBI cannot show that video to the family. We asked GBI about it today. GBI did not directly answer our questions about releasing the video, but said it hopes to wrap up the investigation in the next few weeks. So far now, the family still waits. We need to clear up the misinformation and hold accountable whoever's responsible for this shooting. In addition to the video, the family is also asking for medical records from the hospital where the teen was taken after he was shot by police. Here's a look now at three other big headlines we are following for you tonight. Federal investigators are Joe Biden and his son Hunter are linked to foreign intelligence uh, operations. The emails were found on a laptop the FBI seized from a Delaware repair shop. According to NBC, one email, which has not been authenticated, suggested a meeting between Joe Biden and a rep from a Ukrainian firm that once paid his son Hunter. The Biden campaign says there is no evidence the meeting happened. The story was first published in the New York Post. Uh, that's a conservative tabloid. It remains unclear whether the emails have been doctored. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien has confirmed plans to take more U.S. troops out of Afghanistan. President Donald Trump has ordered the Pentagon to cut the number to. O'Brien says if the conditions per people out earlier. Seek emergency youth authorization, but not before the election. The company regulatory filings could come possibly by the third week of November at least two months of safety data authorizing emergency use of any industry among the hardest hit during the pandemic travel now new findings about and how to best protest if you're flying here is Kristen Dahlgren tonight a new study may come Researchers examined how simulated virus both in flight and on the ground. United Airlines planes over six months. Unmasked mannequins. Researchers released into the cabin. That would be equivalent to thousands of human coughs. Masked, not even 1% of the 99.7% as fresh outside air cycled in hospital grade HEPA filters. In comparison, the average home 90 minutes. The risk of getting coronavirus on a plane is than, you know, any other. In Couldn't take into account passengers moving. 
neighbors or eating. Researchers give protection. Be smart, take precautions. Any flyers breathing a sigh of relief. Maybe less risky than once feared. Next, we are checking in with NBC's Chuck. Very good about one particular Senate. You are sick. Clean and disinfect frequently touched. For more information, visit CDC. This message brought to you by the National. Station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. But your 11 Alive Storm Trackers have been posting pictures on our Storm Tracker Facebook page of the leaves starting to turn all across North Georgia. So if you want to go up and see some of those in the mountains, it is going to be cool. So grab your sweaters, grab your jackets before you head up mid 30s in the morning. We will make it up into the low 60s. So dress in layers because by the afternoon, as the wind starts to die down in some spots, it may actually feel kind of uh, mild out there during the afternoon hour, especially on Sunday when we'll see those temperatures in the mid 60s. But overall, a cool crisp weekend ahead after our frontal system moved through here. Now that front is off to our south and we're left with crystal clear skies behind the front and kind of breezy conditions. We'll have those winds gusting up around 20 miles per hour yet this evening uh, as high pressure is going to bring in air out of Canada across the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley and then into North Georgia. So we're definitely seeing those temperatures drop as that dry air settles in. And this is the kind of dry where I think we're really going to notice it. Our hands are already so dry from all this hand sanitizer and hand washing. And now with dew points down in the 20s, we're going to feel a bit parched, I think. So stay well hydrated. Our high temperatures today uh, ended up being right around 69 in Atlanta, 67 in Marietta and 64 in Canton. Meanwhile, we were still in the 70s here 
where the frontal system didn't quite make as much progress because it's moving from northwest to southeast. So we're seeing that cool air filter in all across North Georgia on that gusty wind. In fact, we've had some gusty winds out in the northwest up around 28 miles per hour in Dalton, 30 miles per hour in Rome was the peak gust there and the peak gust in Atlanta, 29 miles per hour. So that was all brought in by that cold front as it moved through the weekend behind that front and this will be the coldest night we have had since May. So it's going to be a reality check for a lot of us. That's why I pulled out the turtleneck today. I was I felt that chill in the air. I was like, I'm not used to this. I've got to slowly adjust. So as we head into the overnight hours, those temperatures dropping down. This is the Atlanta forecast and we're going to see those temperatures get down into the mid 40s here by the time we get up and at them early tomorrow. So a chilly start to your day. If you're taking your dog out for a walk early, just warmly. We're going to be around 44 degrees by lunchtime. We should make it up to around 60, though. Perfect weather to take the dog out to the park. And then by dinner time, we should be up in the mid 60s. So it will be a cool, brisk day. The breezes will be up around 15 miles per hour on our Saturday. A little bit milder on Sunday with plenty of sunshine both days. So what a great fall weekend to get out and enjoy the blue skies and the sunshine. So the dry conditions will be settling in. We're gonna see those dew points dropping down in the 20s. And when you get dew points down this low, that's when you get overnight lows that are really low. So we should be in the mid 30s in Blairsville, low 40s in Dalton and in Canton. And we'll be in the mid 40s here in Atlanta. So a chilly weekend as we head into Saturday and Sunday, but nice mild afternoons and then a big warm up next week and no rain until Friday. A new poll of Georgia voters showing that Joe Biden has a razor thin lead on President Trump with less than three weeks until Election Day. According to the survey USA poll for us at 11 Alive, the former vice president now leading 48 to 46 percent, joined by Chuck Todd right now, moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, it's, it's not just our poll. We have seen others showing that Joe Biden is leading in Georgia and, and Democrats are leading mm -hmm. or they're close to leading in two of the Senate races. Is it going to be a disappointment for the party if Democrats don't win at least something statewide in Georgia? I think so. If they don't win one of the three, either carry carry the state in the presidential or one of the two Senate seats, uh, I think I think there will be this sort of um, it will feel a little and I think then it will give Georgia a little Lucy in the football mindset to, to Democrats that, that you know what maybe it is just out of reach they're not quite there um, look the fact is it takes a Democrat and nationally having a double digit lead for Georgia to be in play for the presidential right so that in itself tells you how hard it is I think for Democrats to win I'll tell you though I'm becoming increasingly bullish on, um, I used to be of the mindset that if I had to say which of these Senate seats the Democrats have the best shot at, I'd say oh, Ossoff over Purdue. It's just cleaner, it's simpler. Now, you know, what I can't figure out is how, how either Loeffler or Collins appeal to voters outside the base when one of them comes up against Warnock. And I, they have raced so far to the right, I just trying to picture, so, if you were to ask me which of the three do Democrats, I think, have the best shot in, I'm getting more bullish every day on, the, on that Senate special. There's no way we could have imagined last December when Governor Kemp appointed Kelly Loeffler uh, to that Senate seat that had been held by Johnny Isaacson for so long in an effort to try to appeal to suburban Atlanta, moderate Mitt Romney kind of Republicans, <laughs> that we would see her pulling up yesterday in Levi's, uh, a ball cap, a Humvee with Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, for a <laughs> news conference. It was a surreal yeah. sort of sight to see that yesterday on our local news. Yeah. It, it, it is, look, Jeff, you've seen this too. When politicians try to transform and run as something they're not, eventually voters catch on. And this transformation she's trying to make, I mean, it, it, you laid it out. She was, she was the, she was appointed to be the Republican that reached out to Chamber of Commerce Republicans. She was not to be the Republican that reached out to QAnon Republicans. Um, so it is, uh, you know, it is, it is certainly not what I think Governor Kemp had in mind for the entire statewide ticket. What he thought that a Kelly Leffler candidacy would bring to the ticket. 
And it is just, again, I look at this and I'm, I am trying to picture how an eventual Republican candidate, be it Collins or Loeffler, pivots back to the general after as far right as they're running right now in this primary. How about the Supreme Court nomination of Judge Amy Coney Barrett? Give me your view of that, uh, your, your take on how that's transpiring right now. Well, look, I think she was basically untouched. Um, and, you know, if you were, I think she, for what it's worth, and I've been mildly surprised this hasn't gotten more attention, she made it pretty clear that she doesn't believe there's a right to privacy in the Constitution. Um, you know, when she would not say that, that Griswold, which is the foundational uh, ruling that, that, that helped find a right to privacy that eventually led to Roe, she doesn't, wouldn't say that was correctly decided. So I was surprised that they, that in itself didn't get more attention. I mean, I think th this is more crystal clear than ever. This is a nominee that is, that, that is probably ready to overturn Roe, which politically I think is very fraught. But Democrats clearly made a decision. They're like, we're not going to get, we're not going to get, do a Kavanaugh here. We're not going to fight her. We're going to lose this battle because we think we can win a war and election day. And we'll see if the Democrats were right about that. But that's clearly what they decided. Make it all about health care. I do think, based on how Republicans on that committee responded to all the health care attacks, certainly the Lindsey Grahams and the Tom Tillis's guys that are on the ballot this year. Um, it certainly put them on the defensive, but it did leave her untouched. And there are some base Democrats who are wondering, are Democrats in 30 years going to regret not fighting her confirmation hard enough? Meet the Press with Chuck Todd, 10 a.m. Chuck, thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. Go Braves. You got it. Are unofficial ballot drop boxes popping up in some areas of the United States? That's a viral claim. And one our Verify team is looking into. You may have seen claims like these that Republicans drop boxes for voters. Is it legal? Our sources are publications. There's no election website and a statement from the California Secretary of show that the state's GOP party set out 12 different drop box locations in Fresno County. But none of those 12 show up on the county's list of official Dropbox locations. Put simply, they weren't officially placed by the county. Claim that California Republicans were creating unofficial Dropboxes? Verified. So is this legal? Well, there's debate over that question. Republicans in the California state legislature and even U.S. Representative Ken Calvert have said they are acting within the state's laws. They see these as an extension of California's ballot harvesting laws, which make it legal for a third party to pick up and drop off ballots. But California Secretary of State and Attorney General sent a cease and desist letter to the California Republican Party, saying non-official drop boxes don't comply with state law governing ballot collection activities. California law does have requirements for having your ballot delivered by a third party. Namely, you have to write their name on your ballot, what their relationship is with you, and then they have to sign the outside of the envelope. Unofficial ballot boxes don't meet this standard. Now, this will likely become a larger legal battle that will have to be determined in the courts. As of now, these unofficial ballot boxes have only been reported in California. But election officials do say to make sure your ballot is definitely counted, go ahead and drop it off at an official drop off location or in the mail. You can find a list of those locations on your local election board website. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Mr. Puckett, thank you, sir. Coming up, how an off-duty nurse's training helped him step into action during a night out with friends. Majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. 
Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are every... An Indianapolis nurse enjoying a drink off duty at a bar used his training to save a man's life. Julia Moffitt shares how the nurse saw a man acting strangely and realized he was not breathing and had no pulse. Now his quick actions are being credited with saving the man's life. Corey Pereira is a nurse and works in the emergency department at Community Hospital East. He says he likes the challenge of never knowing what's coming. One minute you could just be kind of hanging out and, you know, helping out other coworkers do things and the next minute you're running through an emergency coming through the front door or EMS is bringing somebody in. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of exhilarating at mm -hmm. times. During a recent night out at a bar in Brownsburg with his brother, Corey certainly wasn't prepared for what was coming. Just met my brother out for a night of drinks and um, just happened this guy like walked by us and uh, he kind of had this look on his face, but we didn't really think anything much of it just because, you know, we're in a bar and that's kind of expected. Everybody's there having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he took 10, 15 steps to the left of us and then he just collapsed. Corey noticed the man was not blinking or breathing and jumped in. I've seen this look before and that's when I just kind of clicked in the nurse mode and checked the pulse and checked respirations. And, you know, unfortunately he had none and I just started unfolding them, you know. And so the perfect uh, CPR position, start a CPR on him, and then fortunately as I go. Basically had died? Yes, ma'am. He's no pulse, no respirations, just gone. Because of his quick action and training, he was able to revive the man just as police and humble. The hospital probably would never if it hadn't been from an officer who was he had done, writing Mr. Perea with today's climate and concern of ensuring to see Mr. Perea not hesitate. Unfortunately, Perea does not know how the man he revived is doing because of privacy reasons, but he hopes he has made a quick recovery. ...are part of fall, and one company thinks that... Would you like your face mask to smell... <laughs> Maybe you would. Hormel food. Canary breathable bacon face mask. Scented technology. Fiber cloth so you can. Suey Razorback. All of. <laughs> bit too much. That's a little too Maybe much. Maybe around. Coming up next, one woman's horse. During the Halloween season. 
prime time, weeknights, TM. There are ever respiratory diseases. Wash your act with people who are sick. Avoid stay home when you are sick. Clean and disinfect frequently touch. For more information, visit CDC. This message brought to you by the National Station. Noon on 11 Alive. Smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. In the season of Halloween, one woman is taking the holiday spirit to a whole new level involving spirits. John Goodwin has the story for us. Across the bridge from Astoria sits the small town of Chinook. We're just, you know, a basic fishing community is what we are. Nancy Avey has lived right off the main drag for 17 years. I got chickens, I've got ducks, I got two rabbits. And of course, 26-year-old Comanche. Well, what I do first is I get him ready, and then I go ahead and saddle him up, take him down the road a couple times just because he hasn't get, doesn't get rid very much. Nancy and Comanche are getting ready for something they've done. Yeah, he just loves to go. He likes to do it. This thing, because it's never happened, you know, in our little town. In a couple weeks, she'll suit up for a head-turning trip. Annual strut down Highway 101 through a headless horseman. I just made up. It was kind of funky, but it worked. And so now it works really well. And it's something neighbors here have come to expect. In Irving, the author of Sleepy Hollow, visited. I had one little boy, he got goes, can't you talk with that? I says, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it's for the people, because it doesn't matter. Nancy says it took a while, it actually was. Now there's quite the cult following in this one horse town. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now.
Right now in prime time, we close out the week the way it started. Georgia early voters breaking records. The momentum continues tonight. And the family's plea to find their father, who's been missing for over a year. Investigators believe foul play was involved and say they need the public's help to figure out what happened. But we begin tonight with what doctors call an alarming rise in COVID-19 cases across the United States. There are 26 states with aggressive outbreaks right now, and Georgia is on the verge of joining them. That's according to the White House Task Force. Georgia reported more than 1,600 new cases today, the number of infections increasing steadily up 5% week to week. Our Caitlin Ross spoke with an infectious disease expert about what the nationwide surge means for our state. COVID-19 cases are up 18% across the country, according to COVIDTrackingData.com. And public health experts warn that number could spike with the winter holidays approaching. We should be very prepared for um, things to get worse. Right now, Georgia is classified as orange, according to the White House Task Force. That means the state is at risk of an outbreak. The state's currently in red with active outbreaks are in colder climates. And Dr. Amber Schmidtke worries as temperatures drop in Georgia, the numbers here will rise. We did come off of a very large peak over the summer, but we have bottomed out at a rate that is still twice as high as where we were prior to the summer surge. She says after months of isolation, many people have grown complacent about COVID-19. Public health doesn't matter until it matters directly to them, uh, meaning that they know somebody in their family or their social network who has gotten sick or has had complications or possibly passed away from the illness. She says if people don't see a rise in their own communities, they don't believe it's happening. We reopened schools after public health professionals warned us that that could lead to an increase in cases. And we haven't seen that necessarily. And so again, we're getting into that complacency mode. The weather is nice in Georgia right now, making outdoor gatherings easy and safer in terms of COVID-19 spread. But she says big gatherings indoors for the winter holidays could put people at risk. Love and friendship are not protective against disease transmission. Um, you know, you can love someone very much and still accidentally give them the virus. She says while well, Georgia is currently classified as orange, meaning at risk for an outbreak, if you include the number of suspected positive COVID-19 cases in the state, we're already in red, which means active outbreak status. Today was the deadline for states to submit their plans to the CDC outlining how they will distribute the eventual coronavirus vaccine. Governor Brian Kemp says Georgia is ready. Our plan is ready. We will be submitting that. Dr. Toomey will today. The governor is speaking to reporters after touring the site of the COVID vaccine trial in Savannah. Once a vaccine is approved, the federal government must figure out how many doses go to each state. From there, state officials are responsible for distributing them to local providers. The CDC has given states about two weeks to set up those distribution centers, even though trials for two of the four leading vaccine candidates have been halted for safety concerns. It can be coming out about coronavirus so we're breaking single day we give them to you and you'll find the very latest on the front page of the 11 alive app or under our coronavirus section of 11alive.com breaking tonight senator david Perdue is taking some heat for comments before president trump's rally in macon in a brief speech senator Perdue seemed to intentionally miss name and Kamala, or what Kamala, or Kamala, Kamala, Mala, Mala, I don't know. Whatever. The video, as you see, was tweeted out by Senator Purdue's Democratic opponent, John Ossoff. The senator has a narrow lead over his challenger in the new 11 Alive Survey USA poll. John Ossoff also tweeted this My opponent, GOP Senator David Purdue, of anti Semitic attack ad infamy, just mocked Senator Harris's name at a Trump rally. We are so much better than this. We reached out to the Purdue campaign and received this in response. Senator Purdue simply mispronounced Senator Harris's name and he didn't mean anything by it. He was making an argument against the radical socialist agenda that she and her endorsed candidate John Ossoff are pushing. Senator Purdue was one of the warm up acts for the president who is actually trailing Joe Biden in Georgia by two percentage points in the new 11 Alive Survey USA poll. President Trump tonight confident, though, as always. We won Macon, Georgia. We're going to win it again. It's great to be back. 
in the heart of this incredible state with the thousands of loyal, hardworking, unbelievable American patriots. Thank you very much. In 18 days from now, we're going to win the state of Georgia. We're going to win four more years. And this was the president's second visit to Georgia just in the last month. Well, politics are rarely pretty. Campaign seasons come with strong opinions and clashes of competing ideologies. And it can also be, though, a time of hope, inspiration, and action. And we've seen that all throughout the week and the record-breaking number of Georgians making their voices heard. Nearly one and a half million people in our state have already voted and tens of thousands standing in line for hours to make that happen. Today we spoke with some voters in Newton County. President Trump barely won Newton County back in 2016 with just over 50% of the vote. We wanted to know what voters would want the pol other political side to know about them. We, we're all brothers and sisters. We gotta, uh, we gotta survive here together. You know, we're going through a pandemic. Uh, there's no need for all the hatred and uh, violence, you know, and uh, you know, we just gotta learn to love each other more, that's all. I'm a veteran and all veterans should be taken care of. Basically, is it? Yeah. And yeah. it's happening right now as good as it can get, but it should be better for them. Well, those conversations always so important to have. 11 Alive, of course, is where Atlanta speaks, and we want to continue to hear from you. If you could speak to voters on the other side of what your opinion is or the way that you're planning to vote, what would you want them to know about you? You can text us your thoughts at 404-885-7600, and we look forward to hearing from you. DeKalb County police are looking for a man with disabilities who's been missing for over a year now. Daniel Kwan is 78 and wheelchair bound because he's paralyzed from the chest down. He went missing last September. The next day, his car, his wheelchair and personal items were found in Gwinnett County with one of his acquaintances. Investigators say they don't have a suspect right now, but they do not believe Quan left on his own free will. His two daughters are pleading for help to find out what happened and they're sending a message to their father. Hang in there. We're coming to help and find you. So don't give up because we love you and we know that you love us and um, just don't give up. Investigators say Quan has certain medications that he needs, which is making the situation more urgent. We are going to have more on this story coming up tonight on Up Late at 11. A family says there is no explanation. Why would anyone target a child? Their son, Brian, just 13 years old, he was shot and killed in front of his home. The family telling 11 Alive the gunman did not say one word before opening fire. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens has updates in Clayton County where the search is still on for that gunman tonight. And this is a tough one. The family says they are devastated after watching 13 year old Brian Zavala murdered right before their eyes. And the family says they had no idea why. They killed my son for nothing. I don't owe anybody anything. I don't have enemies. I work every day from five in the morning to seven o'clock at night. Santiago Zavala is overwhelmed with grief after watching his 13 year old son, Brian, gunned down just feet away from him on the family's front lawn on Willow Lane Thursday night. His son killed in the shooting. The family's car left riddled with bullets. And he looked at my son and he just shot him right there like it was nothing. <laughs> the pain proving unbearable as he spoke to us. He was only 13 years old. Brian's 16 year old brother Jesus was there too. The, a car pulled up on the on the front of the neighbor's house and the shooter came out with a shotgun and stood right there, pointed the shotgun at my brother and shot my brother in the face and we tried to stop all the blood but by the time the police got here, uh, it didn't seem that he had like, life or, or a chance to, to live. Jesus says his brother Brian was a happy teen who loved riding his bike. The 13-year-old was a student at Kendrick Middle School. The entire family say they're tormented by this unexpected tragedy. My dad is really devastated. Um, if he would have talked, he, he couldn't talk because he... 
it's his little boy and I'm trying to be as as tough as I can be so I could um help them with something it, it's my brother but um I just want my family to be strong Police have not released a motive or any other details, and the family says the gunman never said a word before taking Brian's life. The shooter didn't even say, I want your money, or this is a robbery, or I'm assaulting you. He just came, stood there, silence, and shot my brother. And the family says Brian would have turned 14 in just about a week. Police are searching for the gunman, but haven't released a motive yet in this case. The family has set up a GoFundMe page, hoping to raise enough money to pay for a funeral. We have that information as well as a statement from Brian's middle school on our website. Mm, my heart goes out to the family of that boy. Hopefully police are able to make some headway. Well, here are some other big headlines we are following tonight. A man has been arrested in the murder of actor Thomas Jefferson Byrd. Atlanta police arrested 30 year old Antonio Rhines today, and we're showing you drone footage of the arrest earlier this morning. It happened inside an apartment off North Camp Creek Parkway. Byrd was found shot multiple times in the back almost two weeks ago. That was near his home in Southwest Atlanta. Police have not released a motive for that shooting. Bird was known for his roles in several Spike Lee films. A tragic story out of White County, a 46 year old mother fell to her death while hiking in northeast Georgia with her family. The county public safety director says Jennifer Randall was hiking Yona Mountain with her husband and her son on Tuesday. She fell more than 300 feet from the side of the mountain. EMS and fire personnel had to scale the terrain to reach her. Her son and her husband not hurt. Arrest warrants show police are investigating whether a deadly shooting in Kennesaw may be gang related. According to the Associated Press, 14 people in all are facing charges, 11 of them teenagers. Cobb County police say two groups got into a fight at an apartment complex Sunday night. It ended in gunfire, killing Devere Blake. A teen is accused of pulling the trigger. Three adults are sitting in the Cobb County Jail tonight, accused of encouraging the teen gunman and trying to help him get away. The Atlanta Falcons have returned to work. This is a day after shutting down practice facilities following a positive COVID-19 test. Prior to that test on Tuesday, the Falcons organization told us rookie defensive tackle Marlon Davidson was placed on the reserve COVID list. Nearly three weeks ago, Falcons rookie AJ Terrell became the first player in the NFL to be placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. Right now, Sunday's game against the Minnesota Vikings is still a go. He had just been released on probation and a month later, police say Quentin Rogers carja carjacked a Gwinnett mom, forcing her to jump out of her moving car with her daughter. Police tell 11 Alive's Deborah Tuff if, if he's not caught, it could happen again. Gwinnett police call it a crime of opportunity and say be careful because Quentin Rogers is considered very dangerous. Police say kidnapped, beat, then carjacked this mom at this gas station on Boggs Road in Gwinnett County. The entire thing caught on surveillance video. The woman who police say is terrified jumped out of her moving car with her one-year-old baby girl still strapped inside her car seat. A month before that, records show Rogers was released on probation after having a criminal history dating back almost 20 years to 2001. Now he's on the run and police are on the lookout. We do consider him to be dangerous, so, and obviously we are concerned about him doing this sort of thing again. If you know where Rogers is, if you have any information, please call Gwinnett County Police. Well, the frontal system went through earlier today. It's bringing in cool, dry air, so it's going to be perfect for going to look at fall color up in the high country. So coming up, we'll talk about the weekend forecast and just how low these temperatures are going to go. Opportunity isn't always equal for Atlanta students, those gaps even wider during the pandemic. We're going to tell you how a local group is helping bridge the divide. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news in primetime right after the break. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF.
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Educators say the transition to digital learning through the pandemic is widening the opportunity gap with Atlanta students. A nonprofit is working more than ever to help close it and address racial equity in education. It's really encouraging to just have somebody that's in your corner. Support is valuable and vital for a student to reach their potential. Next generation men and women is helping close the opportunity gap. I can always come to any anybody that works in action and just talk about whatever I need to talk about and they can provide me with a solution. To really arm and equip them with information and knowledge and awareness uh, of what's out there. And Executive Director Phil Olalier says 20,000 Atlanta youth face that gap, receiving less than 10 minutes of guidance counseling a year. The majority get no mentoring. The odds are so stacked up against our young men and women to succeed. In order to really reverse those odds, we have to provide them with the opportunity uh, and the resources and support that they need. NextGen pairs teachers along with college and corporate mentors with underserved students. It's essential during these times. Those odds have only grown recently. This gap is widening and it's gonna widen because of COVID, period. I am concerned about everybody as a whole doing worse in school. They feel like they, like they can't succeed like they're just set up for failure. They need to realize that even in the midst of the pandemic, that their future is still vital and important. Touch points and training that are more important than ever. Really tap into the greatest value that our city has and it's our youth, it's our young people. We're not going to let them get lost. Your 11 Alive storm trackers tracked a cold front that came through earlier and that ended up bringing in some cooler air for us. So it is going to make the perfect setting for going up and pumpkin picking. I know there's still some late season apples on the trees up in North Georgia, or maybe you just want to go look for some fall color, which is near peak in some areas here. So for places like in uh, Blue Ridge and Ella J, we're going to see those temperatures down in the mid thirties for lows tomorrow, getting into the low sixties for high temperatures. So unseasonably cool and just a few degrees warmer on Sunday. So with these dry, crisp conditions, no rain to worry about on your drive up there. It should be a great weekend to visit at the North Georgia mountains. So let's go ahead and talk about this pattern. There's the front as it moves on through and you can see that behind it we do have some much cooler air and that extends well up into Canada and that cold air is being pulled down in our direction by an area of high pressure that is off to our northwest. So the difference between high pressure to our northwest and lower pressure along the front is driving in that northerly wind and we've seen some pretty good gusts today as well bringing in all this nice dry air. So at some Sets us up for a really nice fall pattern this weekend. Temperatures were on the cool side today. We were four degrees cooler than normal. We should be around 73 and we were at 69, but it was uh, 11 degrees, actually 12 degrees cooler than it was yesterday when we had 81 degrees. So definitely a lot cooler as we head into the weekend. There are those wind gusts. We've seen winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour in Rome today, 29 in Atlanta, 20 in Covington. So a breezy afternoon and evening. And it'll breezy, be breezy at times during the weekend 
as well. So that'll make it feel cooler, especially in those morning hours. So right now we're at 49 in Blairsville, 51 in Clayton. Uh, we're milder over in Athens where the coolest air, the coolest of the air hasn't reached yet. We're at 53 in Rome and we're at 53 in Carrollton. So we're running right around oh, 10 to 13, even 14 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday as that air mass really starts to settle in. So the cold front is through and we're seeing the clear dry conditions behind it. Great stargazing weather, great camping weather tonight too. And this will be the coldest night we have had since May. So most of us aren't used to this and it's gonna be a reality check. Some nice fall color here in the Atlanta area as well. And those temperatures overnight getting down into the mid 40s to start early tomorrow. So on your wisometer, we have a 10 on Saturday because it's gonna be a little on the cool side, but it is going to be beautiful. And if you happen to be going out for the Georgia Tech Clemson game and nice conditions as well. Temperatures will get into the mid 60s and we'll see a lot of sunshine. Winds not quite as breezy as today, but still some gusts up to 15 miles per hour. So a nice weekend ahead with brilliant sunshine. It'll be the coolest on Saturday and then slightly warmer on Sunday. So we'll see those temperatures slowly warming up. Moisture levels way down and when you get really dry air, it cools off so much faster. So dew points plunging as that dry air moves in down in the teens and Marietta, that is a wintertime type of dryness, not very common for this time of year. So overnight lows will respond. We'll be down to close to freezing in Blairsville. We may have some frost actually on the pumpkin in North Georgia from these cold temperatures. So a chilly morning tomorrow and a cool afternoon. Lots of sunshine, mid 60s for a high, a little bit warmer on Sunday, upper 40s to the upper 60s. Monday is an 11 alive day, getting into the mid 70s with plenty of sunshine. And it looks like we're going to be staying dry most of next week, just a 30% chance of showers on Friday. This is the second day in a row that new COVID-19 cases in Georgia rose above 1600, and that is significantly higher than our average of about 1200 cases per day. New cases of the virus are up 5% from last week, and Georgia's Department of Public Health also reported 64 deaths today. That's double our current average. It's also the highest number we've seen in three weeks. As the number of coronavirus cases continue to increase across the country, the effects of the virus are being felt in sports as well. Jay Gray has more. With COVID-19 rushing across the country, many college and NFL teams are struggling on defense right now. Look, let's take a timeout. Let's dial up the right play. But the best game plan for coronavirus just isn't clear. Without complete total bubbling, which is not practical for most of these football teams, there's a great chance that every game that's scheduled will not find a place to be played before the year is done. A handful of NCAA games have been postponed this weekend. Georgia and Alabama will still play. Um, at this point, I'm completely asymptomatic, feel fine. But legendary coach Nick Saban won't be on the sidelines after testing positive for the virus. The surge of infections in the locker room, many doctors say, a magnifying glass on a nationwide spike. This is a historic pandemic, the likes of which we have not seen in our own civilization here for 102 years. But this is something that's serious, that we need to take seriously. And all you need to do is look at the numbers. The numbers are overwhelming. More than 8 million cases, close to 220,000 of those deadly. And the score still climbing. The spread of the virus off and on the field. Pits in motion. Anything but a game. This year, the Peachtree Road Race is virtual, but you can still enter our Oh Say Can You See contest. The winner will perform the national anthem virtually for participants at the world's largest 10K or the Peachtree Junior. Just email a video of yourself singing the national anthem to contest at 11alive.com by noon on Friday, October 23rd. We can't wait to hear your voices. And Atlanta Public Schools making its decision on in-person learning. We have their explanation coming up. On Alive Today. Let's start with a viral message going around. 
quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Students in Atlanta Public Schools won't be heading back to in-person classes at all in 2020. The district announced it will delay plans for a return to face-to-face -face learning at least until January. In an online post, Superintendent Dr. Lisa Herring says the move comes after community coronavirus data had begun to trend in the wrong direction. She says they consulted with public health officials, health experts, and stakeholders to make that decision. The district had planned for an October 26th in-person return for some of its students, but that date was tentative based on community transmission. A family still waiting for a video that could help answer questions about a young man's death. As time drags on, their calls for transparency getting louder and louder. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. A Cobb County family hoped today would be the day they would finally see police body camera video of their 17 year old son who was shot and killed by police back in July. But tonight they tell 11 Alive's Naima Abdullahi they're still waiting and their calls for transparency are growing louder. It's been more than 90 days since 17 year old Vincent Truett was shot and killed by Cobb County police. Since then, his family says they've had more questions than answers. His name was Vincent Truitt. His family says he was an ambitious student, an active church member, a loving son, and now truly missed. 18 hours passed before we were notified. My child died alone. You know, it's a truly heartbreaking case where you have a young man uh, who, by all extensive purposes, was a very good young man. Attorney Gerald Griggs says the 17-year-old died after being shot in the back twice by police back in July. Here's what the family was initially told. Investigators say a Cobb County police officer spotted a stolen vehicle. GBI says after a traffic stop, the teen got out of the car and ran, but at some point he was shot by police. But the family says investigators have given conflicting information about whether the teen had a gun. I don't really know how you could justify this shooting. And that's why I'm very curious at the fact that after 90 some odd days of having this video, the video has not been made available to the family. Gerald Griggs says that in a private meeting with the family this week, the Cobb County District Attorney says that there should be no issue why the GBI cannot show that video to the family. We asked GBI about it today. GBI did not directly answer our questions about releasing the video, but said it hopes to wrap up the investigation in the next few weeks. So far now, the family still waits. We need to clear up the misinformation and hold accountable whoever's responsible for this shooting. In addition to the video, the family is also asking for medical records from the hospital where the teen was taken after he was shot. Here's a look at three big headlines we're following. First, federal investigators are examining whether emails allegedly about Joe Biden and his son Hunter are linked to a foreign intelligence operation. The emails were found on a laptop the FBI seized from a Delaware repair shop According to NBC, one email, which has not been authenticated, suggested a meeting between Joe Biden and a rep from a Ukrainian firm that once paid his son Hunter. The Biden campaign says there is no evidence the meeting happened. The story was first published in New York Post, a conservative tabloid. It remains unclear whether the emails may have been doctored. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien has confirmed plans to take more, than, more U.S. troops out of Afghanistan. President Donald Trump has ordered the Pentagon to cut the number to 2,500 by early 2021. O'Brien says if the conditions permit, the administration would love to get people out earlier. The drug maker Pfizer says it will seek emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine very soon, but not before the election. The company's CEO made the announcement this morning. Regulatory fi filings could come as soon as safety data is available, possibly by the third week of November. The FDA has said it wants at least two months of safety data on half of the trial participants before authorizing emergency use of any COVID vaccine. The cautious optimism that kicked off the college football season is quickly being replaced by a COVID reality check. The virus is now sidelining players and coaches and even entire teams. With a growing number of games postponed, there are serious questions about the entire season. Morgan Chesky reports from Arlington, Texas. Today, COVID-19 blitzing football at both the professional and the collegiate levels with uh, multiple players, coaches, and now teams being sidelined as a result of the virus's spread. In fact, just within the last few hours, the Indianapolis Colts have temporarily shut down their practice facility due to a positive case there. This comes just one day after the Atlanta Falcons did the same thing. The New England Patriots, meanwhile, announcing that quarterback Cam Newton has been cleared to return to the field after his own bout with the virus. 
Coach Bill Belichick saying that this is not a day-by-day -day situation, uh, but an hour-by-hour -hour one that they're just trying to do the best they can. On the collegiate front, we know multiple games have been postponed. The University of Florida announcing more than 20 athletes tested positive for the virus. An unknown number of others have been forced into quarantine as a result of contact tracing. The athletic director is saying that they simply don't feel it's appropriate to play their upcoming game against LSU. And now with multiple games being postponed, some say entire seasons could be called into question before Sun Conferences even take the field. Morgan Chesky, NBC News, Dallas. Well, it's a breezy, cool evening out there. And as we head into this weekend, temperatures are likely going to be colder than they have been since May. So coming up, just how chilly it is going to get and how long this fall weather is going to hang around. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. The airline industry among the hardest hit during the pandemic with millions of Americans still avoiding air travel. Now new findings about the risk of exposure on planes and how to protect yourself best could calm the fear of flying. Here's Kristen Dahlgren. Tonight, a new study may calm fears about flying. Researchers examined how simulated virus particles move through the aircraft, both in flight and on the ground, conducting 300 tests in empty United Airlines planes over six months. Using both masked and unmasked mannequins, researchers released more than 180 million particles into the cabin. That would be equivalent to the number of particles produced by thousands of human coughs. 
The Department of Defense report found when masked, not even 1% of the particles made it to the nearby passengers. 99.7% were filtered out within six minutes as fresh outside air cycled into the plane, made even cleaner by hospital-grade HEPA filters. In comparison, researchers say it typically takes the average home 90 minutes to cycle similar particles from the air. The risk of getting coronavirus on a plane is probably less than you know, any other indoor space that I can think of. While the study couldn't take into account passengers moving around the cabin, turning to talk to neighbors or eating, researchers say wearing a mask is the most effective protection. Be smart, take precautions, follow the rules. Tonight, many flyers breathing a sigh of relief that the air they're breathing on planes may be less risky than once feared. Oh, we've seen a real change in the weather. It's definitely getting chilly out there. If you haven't been outside uh, and you're going to go out early tomorrow, uh, be advised it's going to be pretty chilly first thing in the morning down into the mid 40s here, down into the low 30s near freezing across parts of North Georgia. And the reason why is that northerly flow we are seeing here. So that sets us up for a nice, crisp, uh, clear weekend where we're going to see some uh, gorgeous uh, fall weather, especially in the North Georgia mountains. So as you take a look at the way things shaped up today, our high temperatures looked like this with temperatures getting on up to the upper 60s this afternoon. Compare that to when we were in the low 80s yesterday. So definitely a, a big change in the last 24 hours running some 10 to 15 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday. So we made it up to 69 in Gainesville, 64 in Canton, 65 in Carrollton. Meanwhile, we were still pretty warm here in Athens, 76, Eatonton, 77. It took a while for that cold air to slide to the east, but the temperatures will be dropping down too as we get into the overnight hours and that cool air continues to settle in across the eastern third of our state. So the frontal system is pushed to our south. That's ushering in the drier air. We have high pressure off to our northwest and we're seeing that northerly flow here and we've seen those gusts today up close to 30 miles per hour in some spots. So that brought in that drier air and that drier air is going to make it feel nice and crisp throughout the day tomorrow. So there are some of those peak wind gusts we saw up to 30 miles an hour in Rome, 18 miles per hour in Gainesville, 29 miles per hour in Atlanta. So pretty gusty for a time there as the front blew through. So right now we're looking at 49 in Blairsville, 50 in Clayton, 60 in Athens, still pretty mild there. It's 49 in Carrollton. So temperatures already getting into the 40s in uh, the Carrollton area. And we're running some 10 to 15 degrees cooler than we were 24 hours ago. So definitely seeing the change Changes. Now that the front has moved through, it's clear and dry, and it looks like this will be the coldest night we've had since the beginning of May. So I'm not quite used to it yet. I don't know how you feel about it, but a 10 on a wasometer for Saturday. I uh, didn't put an 11, even though it's going to be gorgeous, just because it's starting out so chilly first thing in the morning. So this is our temperature scheme as we head into the weekend, getting into the overnights and we're dropping down in the 30s in the North Georgia mountains. Some models have said that we could be down close to freezing in Blairsville. So we will be in the 30s, likely could see some frost in some of the wind protected spots. Tomorrow afternoon, only in the mid 60s, low to mid 60s for the most part across the Atlanta metro area. Getting into Sunday, not quite as chilly to start, but still we're down in the 40s. And then once we get into the afternoon, temperatures will be getting up close to 70 on our Sunday. So temperatures will be rebounding just a bit as we get to the second half of the weekend. So a nice, cool, crisp fall like weekend. It's so different than last weekend when we had all the storms and the tropical humidity around. It's going to be totally different than that. Gorgeous. Monday's an 11 alive day. Beautiful sunshine getting back in the mid 70s and then a nice string of dry days before the chances for rain start to go up at the end of the week. Is this the year Democrats win statewide in Georgia, either the presidential vote or a Senate seat, or is it going red once again? Jeff Hollinger put that question to NBC's Chuck Todd. A new poll of Georgia voters showing that Joe Biden has a razor thin lead on President Trump with less than three weeks until Election Day, according to the Survey USA poll for us at 11 Alive, the former vice president now leading 48 to 46 percent, joined by Chuck Todd right now, moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, it's, it's not just our poll. We have seen others showing that Joe Biden is leading in Georgia and, and Democrats are leading mm -hmm. or they're close to leading in two of the Senate races. Is it going to be a disappointment for the party if Democrats don't win at least something statewide in Georgia? 
I think so. If they don't win one of the three, either carry carry the state in the presidential or one of the two Senate seats, uh, I think I think there will be this sort of. Um, it will feel a little, and I think then it will give Georgia a little Lucy in the football mindset to, to Democrats that, that, you know what, maybe it is just out of reach. They're not quite there. Um, look, the fact is it takes a Democrat nationally having a double-digit lead for Georgia to be in play for the presidential, right? So that in itself tells you how hard it is, I think, for Democrats to win. I'll tell you, though, I'm becoming increasingly bullish on, um, I used to be of the mindset that if I had to say which of these Senate seats the Democrats have the best shot at, I'd say, uh, Ossoff over Purdue, it's just cleaner, it's simpler. Now, you know, what I can't figure out is how, how either Loeffler or Collins appeal to voters outside the base when one of them comes up against Warnock. And I, they have raced so far to the right, I just trying to picture, so, if you were to ask me which of the three do Democrats I think have the best shot in, I'm getting more bullish every day on, the, on that Senate special. There's no way we could have imagined last December when Governor Kemp appointed Kelly Loeffler uh, to that Senate seat that had been held by Johnny Isaacson for so long in an effort to try to appeal to suburban Atlanta, moderate Mitt Romney kind of Republicans, <laughs> that we would see her pulling up yesterday in Levi's, uh, a ball cap, a Humvee with Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, for a <laughs> news conference. It was a surreal yeah. sort of sight to see that yesterday on our local news. Yeah. It, it, it is, look, Jeff, you've seen this too. When politicians try to transform and run as something they're not, eventually voters catch on. And this transformation she's trying to make, I mean, it, it, you laid it out. She was, she was the, she was appointed to be the Republican that reached out to Chamber of Commerce Republicans. She was not to be the Republican that reached out to QAnon Republicans. Um, so it is, uh, you know, it is, it is certainly not what I think Governor Kemp had in mind for the entire statewide ticket. What he thought that a Kelly Leffler candidacy would bring to the ticket. And it is just, again, I look at this and I'm, I am trying to picture how an eventual Republican candidate, be it Collins or Loeffler, pivots back to the general after as far right as they're running right now in this primary. How about the Supreme Court nomination of Judge Amy Coney Barrett? Give me your view of that, uh, your, your take on how that's transpiring right now. Well, look, I think she was basically untouched. Um, and, you know, if you were, I think she, for what it's worth, and I've been mildly surprised this hasn't gotten more attention, she made it pretty clear that she doesn't believe there's a right to privacy in the Constitution. Um, you know, when she would not say that, that Griswold, which is the foundational uh, ruling that, that, that helped find a right to privacy that eventually led to Roe, she doesn't, wouldn't say that was correctly decided. So. I was surprised that they did, that in itself didn't get more attention. I mean, I think th this is more crystal clear than ever. This is a nominee that is that, that is probably ready to overturn Roe, which politically I think is very fraught. But Democrats clearly made a decision. They're like, we're not going to get we're not going to get do a Kavanaugh here. We're not going to fight her. We're going to lose this battle because we think we can win a war and election day. And we'll see if the Democrats were right about that. But that's clearly what they decided. Make it all about health care. I do think, based on how Republicans on that committee responded to all the health care attacks, certainly the Lindsey Grahams and the Tom Tillis's guys that are on the ballot this year, um, it certainly put them on the defensive. But it did leave her untouched. And there are some base Democrats who are wondering, are Democrats in 30 years going to regret not fighting her confirmation hard enough? Meet the Press with Chuck Todd, 10 a.m. Chuck, thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. Go Braves. You got it. Our unofficial ballot boxes popping up in some areas across the U.S. That is the viral claim circling online and one our Verify team is looking into. Here's Jason Puckett. You may have seen claims like these, that Republicans in California were creating, quote, fake drop boxes for voters. We're verifying. Is this really happening and is it legal? Our sources are publications by the California Republican Party, the Fresno election website, and a statement from the California Secretary of State. 
Now, archived pages show that the state's GOP party set out 12 different Dropbox locations in Fresno County, but none of those 12 show up on the county's list of official Dropbox locations. Put simply, they weren't officially placed by the County Board of Elections. So the claim that California Republicans were creating unofficial drop boxes verified. So is this legal? Well, there's debate over that question. Republicans in the California state legislature and even U.S. Representative Ken Calvert have said they are acting within the state's laws. They see these as an extension of California's ballot harvesting laws, which make it legal for a third party to pick up and drop off ballots. But California Secretary of State and Attorney General sent a cease and desist letter to the California Republican Party, saying non-official drop boxes don't comply with state law governing ballot collection activities. California law does have requirements for having your ballot delivered by a third party. Namely, you have to write their name on your ballot, what their relationship is with you, and then they have to sign the outside of the envelope. Unofficial ballot boxes don't meet this standard. Now, this will likely become a larger legal battle that will have to be determined in the courts. As of now, these unofficial ballot boxes have only been reported in California. But election officials do say to make sure your ballot is definitely counted, go ahead and drop it off at an official drop off location or in the mail. You can find a list of those locations on your local election board website. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. They are a well-known landmark, and if you've driven up Georgia 400, you've likely seen them. Coming up, the big plans for the King and Queen buildings. Future. Or subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Prime Time, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. We've all probably used Zoom during this pandemic and so many businesses and families are using it to communicate. Now the video sharing giant is letting you make some money while holding your event. 
Zoom is adding tools to let users sell tickets to online classes and concerts and other events. Before this, teachers and performers had to go through a third party site like Eventbrite or ask for virtual tips through PayPal. The new ticket feature still incorporates PayPal and if you want to take advantage of it, you just have to have a paid Zoom account. Rent this space. The perimeter's iconic king and queen buildings are coming under a new leasing company. The landmark towers are sold to a Connecticut based company, were sold rather to a Connecticut based company back in 2015 for just under $500 million. Our partners at the Atlanta Business Chronicle say the owners are handing over leasing duties to Cushman and Wakefield. They're hoping to attract deal savvy companies looking to relocate to the south or with more people working remotely, move some offices to the suburbs. Renters could save about $10 per foot by choosing the King and Queen building over comparable space in Midtown. The city of Dunwoody wants to hear from you about what to do with the old Austin Elementary School site. The building will be demolished, creating 12 acres of green space and now officials are trying to decide the best way to use that area. Will it be to create community gardens or build picnic shelters, a special event space? The survey is available online at the City of Dunwoody website and you have until November 6th to weigh in. And get ready for the big cool down this weekend. Most likely the coldest temperatures we've had in many months getting down into the mid 40s and then making it into the mid 60s tomorrow and then Sunday just a tiny bit warmer, but it's going to be a cool, crisp, beautiful fall weekend and then we warm back up to normal once we head back to work next week. So it's going to be a great weekend for all those fall festival type activities. Even if you don't do a fall festival, it's the carving pumpkins and the drinking cider and all that fun stuff. That's a good looking week. I think that's the best week we've seen in a couple weeks here. Much better than last week. Yeah, definitely. Guaranteed. <laughs> all right, well, primetime rolls on. We will see you at 10 right here on WATL. Thanks for watching. smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks.
televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Live News Primetime on the ATL starts now. On this Friday night, first this evening, a family pleading for help finding their father, who went missing more than a year ago. Daniel Kwan is now 78. He's wheelchair bound. He's paralyzed from the chest down. His wheelchair is uh, and his belongings have been found. But DeKalb County police are still looking for more clues about his disappearance. So what happened to this man? 11 Alive's Chinu Her pieces together what we know so far. We know that he wants to come home to his family. Daniel Kwan's two daughters, Grace and Catherine Kwan, are still searching hard for him more than a year after he disappeared. It's just been really hard. Yeah, it's and we really miss him. We really love him. We just want him back. Kwan is a Korean immigrant and is confined to a wheelchair. Grace and Catherine say they fear someone is holding their father against his will, manipulating him for money. After his disappearance, we discovered that a large sum of money was missing. We believe that he is missing due to this fact. DeKalb County police reports say Grace and Catherine last saw their father on September 3rd, 2019. He was leaving his home. Two days later, the sisters reported him missing after not hearing from him. The next day, on September 6th, Grace and Catherine found their father's modified van and other belongings at the Sugarloaf Summit Apartments in Lawrenceville. The daughters tracked his phone to this location. DeKalb County Police canvassed the area and a neighbor directed them to an apartment. The reports say as police knocked, a family friend noticed a woman, Mi Young Cho Jon, trying to leave through the back door with Mr. Kwan's motorized wheelchair, saying she did not know where Mr. Kwan was. We do not know Mrs. Jun nor his husband, her husband. Anybody that we can link with Mr. Mr. Kwan during the last hours that we can definitively say that he was around, we're going to label them as a person of interest. DeKalb County Police say John is not a suspect, but one of a few, a few persons of interest. They are investigating this case alongside Gwinnett County Police and a federal agency as well. A family says there is just no explanation. Why would anyone target a child? Their son, Brian, just 13 years old, was shot and killed in front of his home. The family telling 11 Alive the gunman never said a word before <laughs> opening fire. 11 Alive's Latasha Gibbons is live in Clayton County, where the search is still on for the gunman tonight. And this is a tough one. The family says they are devastated after watching 13 year old Brian Zavala murdered right before their eyes. And the family says they had no idea why. They killed my son for nothing. I don't owe anybody anything. I don't have enemies. I work every day from 5 in the morning to 7 o'clock at night. Santiago Zavala is overwhelmed with grief after watching his 13-year-old son, Brian, gunned down just feet away from him on the family's front lawn on Willow Lane Thursday night. His son killed in the shooting. The family's car left riddled with bullets. And he looked at my son and he just shot him right there like it was nothing. <laughs> the pain proving unbearable as he spoke to us. He was only 13 years old. Brian's 16-year-old brother, Jesus, was there too. The, a car pulled up on the, on the front of the neighbor's house and the shooter came out with a shotgun. Um, stood right there, pointed the shotgun at my brother and shot my brother in the face and we tried to stop all the blood but by the time the police got here uh, it didn't seem that he had life or, or a chance to, to live. 
Jesus says his brother Brian was a happy teen who loved riding his bike. The 13-year-old was a student at Kendrick Middle School. The entire family say they're tormented by this unexpected tragedy. My dad is really devastated. Um, if he would have talked, he, he couldn't talk because he, it's his little boy and I'm trying to be as, as tough as I can be so I could um, help them with something. It, it's my brother, but um, I just want my family to be strong. Police have not released a motive or any other details, and the family says the gunman never said a word before taking Brian's life. The shooter didn't even say, I want your money, or this is a robbery, or I'm assaulting you. He just came, stood there, silence, and shot my brother. And the family says Brian would have turned 14 in just about a week. Police are searching for the gunman, but haven't released a motive yet in this case. The family has set up a GoFundMe page, hoping to raise enough money to pay for a funeral. We have that information as well as a statement from Brian's middle school on our website. A man has been arrested in the murder of actor Thomas Jefferson Byrd. Atlanta police arrested 30-year-old Antonio Rines today. This is drone footage of the arrest early this morning, and there is the suspect. It happened inside an apartment off North Camp Creek Parkway. Bird was found shot multiple times in the back almost two weeks ago near his home in southwest Atlanta. Police have, have not released a motive for the shooting. Mr. Bird was known for his roles in several Spike Lee films. Arrest warrants show police are investigating whether a deadly shooting in Kennesaw may be gang related. According to the Associated Press, 14 people in all facing charges, 11 of them teens. Cobb County police say the two groups got into a fight at an apartment complex on Sunday night. It ended in gunfire, killing Devere Blank. A teen is now accused of pulling the trigger. Three adults are sitting in the Cobb County jail, accused of encouraging the teen gunman and trying to help him get away. Senator David Perdue taking some heat tonight on Twitter for comments before President Trump's rally in Macon. In a brief speech, the senator seemed to intentionally mispronounce Senator Kamala Harris's name. And Kamala, or what Kamala, or Kamala, 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 I don't know. Whatever. This video was tweeted out by Senator Perdue's opponent, the Democrat John Ossoff. The senator has a narrow lead over his challenger in the latest New 11 Alive Survey USA poll. John Ossoff also tweeted this. My opponent, GOP Senator David Perdue, of anti-Semitic attack ad infamy, just mocked Senator Harris's name in a Trump rally. We are so much better than this, end quote. We reached out to the Perdue campaign and received this response. Senator Perdue simply mispronounced Senator Harris's name. He didn't mean anything by it. He was making an argument against the radical socialist agenda that she and her endorsed candidate, John Ossoff, are pushing, end quote. Senator Perdue is one of the warm-up speakers for the president, who is trailing Joe Biden in Georgia by two percentage points in the new 11 Alive Survey USA poll. President Trump tonight, confident. We won Macon, Georgia. We're going to win it again. It's great to be back in the heart of this incredible state with the thousands of loyal, hardworking, unbelievable American patriots. Thank you very much. In 18 days from now, we're going to win the state of Georgia. We're going to win four more years. It was President Trump's second visit to our state in the last month. Meanwhile, Joe Biden campaigned in Michigan today with stops in Detroit and Southfield. Southfield is uh, outside of Detroit. His running mate, Senator Harris, is staying put this weekend after members of her staff tested positive for COVID. Students in Atlanta public schools won't be heading back to in-person classes at all this year. The district announced it will delay plans for a return to face-to-face -face learning at least until January. In an online post, Superintendent Dr. Lisa Herring says the move comes after community coronavirus data have began to trend in the wrong direction. She says they consulted with public health officials, health care experts, and stakeholders to make the decision. The district had planned for October 26th as the return for some of its students to in-person learning, but that date was tentative based on community transmission. 
This is the second day in a row that new COVID-19 cases in Georgia rose above 1600. That is significantly higher than our average of about 1200 cases per day. New cases of the virus are up 5% from last week. Georgia's Department of Public Health also reported 64 deaths today. That is double our current average. It's also the highest number we've seen in three weeks. Well, the Braves have an opportunity to return to the World Series in this curious season here in the <laughs> pandemic year of 2020. The last time we saw them in the World Series, 1999 against a great New York Yankees team. But uh, it'll be a little bit different this time. But first, they have to take on the Dodgers. They've got to clean out Los Angeles before they can move on to take on either the Astros or the Rays. And the Braves, uh, one fan, the fans, the Braves fans, rather, the ones not in Arlington, Texas, are outside Truist Park cheering on the team as they should be. And that is where we find our Brittany Klein Peter, who is there with them. Whoa, that is a loud crowd there, Brittany. Yeah, it's really loud out here. It is, <laughs> it's definitely electric. People out here are hyped, up, as you can tell behind me. We have. A lot of people out here, I'm not going to lie, it is a lot of people. We've been social distancing, though, and kind of talking to fans out here. And some of the things we're hearing is they're excited. They're super excited for this. They think that, you know, this is it. We're going to make it to the World Series. But they're also cautiously optimistic. A lot of them referring to the 90s when it was just expected that we would go to the NLCS or World Series every year. And, and now we're facing, you know, the so-called Atlanta sports curse and a lot of fans we're mentioning that this evening. I believe in it for sure, but hopefully we'll break it this year with the Braves. I feel like it's real because uh, I feel like the Falcons made it to the Super Bowl and that happened and I think the curse will be broken tonight. So whether the curse is real or not, we're going to see it here tonight. We're going to be out here. We're going to check back in with you a little bit later, but for now, People are hopeful, they're excited that the Braves are going to take home this W and head to the World Series. Ah, gorgeous weather pattern as we head into this weekend. In fact, Kimberly Morris, one of our storm trackers in Canton, she took this picture when that front was passing through this morning. There you can see that frontal boundary and the light shining through. So big changes behind this front and we'll detail them coming up. All right. Thank you, Samantha. Man accused of trying to kidnap a woman and her baby. A criminal record dating back decades. Next, why some state officials believe, and rightfully so, that he is still dangerous. System. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage. A man wanted by police tonight accused of carjacking a young mom, forcing her to jump out of a moving car with her baby. Today, 11 Alive's Deborah Tuff discovered the suspect had recently been released on probation.
You can tell from the video that the suspect in this case was walking into the gas station and as he's walking in, he clearly looks over and sees the victim standing by herself and he decides that that was an opportune time. An opportune time to force a young mom at gunpoint in the backseat of her car, punching her several times in the process. Her baby girl, a one-year-old, sound asleep in a car seat. The Gwinnett County mom did the desperate and unthinkable, jumping out of the moving car with her daughter still strapped inside her car seat. It happened this past August at the Exxon station on Boggs Road. It was until yesterday that police identified the suspect as Quentin Rogers, but they're still searching for him. Criminal records show Rogers has a rap sheet dating back to 2001, just a month before the Gwinnett mom was carjacked. Records show Rogers was released on probation and police say they're working hard to make an arrest now. Obviously, with the type of crime that this was and the randomness involved, we believe that he is a dangerous person. We do consider him to be dangerous, so, and obviously we are concerned about him doing this sort of thing again. Police say the young mom who is terrified to interview took the correct safety measures, making sure she was parking in a high traffic, well lit part of the station. While she did the right things, there are times when even while you do the right thing, you know, crime can still find you. And now police are trying to find Quentin Rogers. If you know where he is, call Gwinnett County Police. Well, it feels like football weather out there, doesn't it, for all of our high school football games tonight. And of course, big game tomorrow at Georgia Tech at Bobby Dodd Stadium, Clemson, number one in town taking on Georgia Tech. So it is going to be quite the day and the, the weather couldn't be better. Temperatures in the low to mid 60s during the game kick off pretty early at noon. Looking out over the Braves ballpark, temperatures are in the mid 50s. So the folks out there trying to watch the game on the big screen, looks like there's plenty of them out there. Maybe they're staying warm that way, but it is getting chilly out there and chillier as we speak. Kind of a roller coaster of temperatures there. When you look at how we have trended the past several hours, we're going downhill right now with temperatures now in the mid 50s and we're going to cool another 10 degrees or so overnight. So the frontal system has moved through. It's pushing off to our southeast and the cooler air is moving in behind that front. So no moisture around for us. No rain this weekend and for the foreseeable future into next week. We have high pressure building in behind it. That's bringing in that northerly flow and that is much cooler, drier air. So this air is more like the air we would have in December or January. Very dry air with those dew points really getting down there. So today we were some 12 degrees cooler than we were yesterday and four degrees below average. So we should be around 73 this time of year. Yesterday we we're 81. So we were really warm today. 69 after that morning low of 56 degrees and our high temps in other places. 70 in Rome today, 65 in Carrollton, 77 in Eatonton. So you see the warmest temperatures were over here in the eastern third of the state where that colder really hadn't reached them yet by the afternoon. So they'll be colder tomorrow and we're seeing breezy conditions all across North Georgia. 28 mile per hour wind gusts in Dalton today, 30 in Rome. 29 in Atlanta and uh, right around 24 miles per hour in Covington was your peak gust. So right now we're looking at 50 in Dalton, 53 in Rome. It's 49 already in Blairsville and in Clayton and those temperatures will be dropping quickly overnight. We're 14 degrees cooler right now than we were yesterday in Dalton, 14 degrees cooler in Atlanta as well as these temperatures are dropping. So the cold fronts already moved through. We're, we're seeing those uh, dry conditions behind the front. And it will end up being the coldest night we have had since May. That's a lot of months. I don't think I'm used to it. I don't think I'm ready for it yet. But those winds are going to continue to blow from time to time, getting gusts up to around 15 yet tonight and into tomorrow. And then Sunday morning as well is looking pretty breezy. So those cool temperatures will feel even cooler since we're going to be getting down to around 44 degrees tonight. So that's going to be a reality check early in the morning. A 10 on your resometer on that scale of 1 to an 11, with 11 being a perfect day. A 10, just because we're starting out so chilly, wind up in the mid 60s. And then tomorrow, plenty of sunshine hour by hour. It is really going to be looking beautiful out there with this very dry air. Dew points are going to be plummeting yet tonight, getting down into the 20s. And a lot of times in the wintertime, we use this as a guide for a low temperature. I don't think we're going to be quite this cold tonight, but usually you can get as cold as the dew point. And uh, so hopefully we're not down to 26 tonight. We're not expecting that, but we are expecting mid 40s here and temperatures near freezing 
in Blairsville. So here's your forecast. Chilly, chilly in the mornings the next couple of days. Then getting into the 60s during the afternoon. Lots of sunshine. Monday we warm it up. We have an 11 alive day in store because we're pretty close to where we should be this time of year with all that sunshine. Clouds start to increase next week, but I think we're going to stay dry most of the week. Just a 30% chance of showers and storms on Friday. And here's your weather wow moment. This is a really good one from Bill in Woodbury, Georgia. This is at Lake Mary weather. He always takes the most splendiferous pictures of clouds. Thank you, Bill, for posting this gorgeous sunset picture. We sure do appreciate it. If you'd like to be an 11 Alive Storm Tracker, we'd like to have you on our team. Just go to our 11 Alive Storm Tracker Facebook page and sign up, and hopefully we will see your work right here. Opportunity isn't always equal for Atlanta students and those gaps even wider during the pandemic. We're going to tell you how a local group is helping bridge the divide. Every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, educators say the transition to digital learning through the pandemic is widening the opportunity gap with Atlanta students. A nonprofit is working more than ever to help close it and address racial equity in education. Cheryl Preheim has the story. It's really encouraging to just have somebody that's in your corner. Support is valuable and vital for a student to reach their potential. The next generation men and women is helping close the opportunity gap. I can always come to any anybody that works in action and just talk about whatever I need to talk about and they can provide me with a solution. To really arm and equip them with information and knowledge and awareness uh, of what's out there. And Executive Director Phil Olalier says 20,000 Atlanta youth face that gap, receiving less than 10 minutes of guidance counseling a year. The majority get no mentoring. The odds are so stacked up against our young men and women to succeed. In order to really reverse those odds, we have to provide them with the opportunity uh, and the resources and support that they need. NextGen pairs teachers along with college and corporate mentors with underserved students. Essential during these times. Those odds have only grown recently. This gap is widening and it's gonna widen because of COVID. 
period. I am concerned about everybody as a whole doing worse in school. They feel like they, like they can't succeed. Like they're just set up for failure. They need to realize that even in the midst of the pandemic, that their future is still vital and important. Touch points and training that are more important than ever. Really tap into the greatest value that our city has, and it's our youth, it's our young people. We're not going to let them get lost. All right, well, while we have this time in between up late and now, I'm going to go uh, check in on the Braves, make sure they are doing what they need to do to get to the World Series. They're doing what they need to do. They're up 2 nothing in the third inning right now. A.J. Minter looks like Bob Gibson right now. So <laughs> <laughs> things are swinging their way, if you pardon the pun. The World Series is about an hour and a half away, I think. I love it. Can't wait. <laughs> Fingers okay. crossed. I'll see Fingers you soon. Fingers crossed, indeed. Thanks, Tisha. We'll see you coming up on 11 Alive in a few minutes. Here's what's coming up on the Big 36, where news is king. A family still waiting for video that could help answer questions about a young man's death. As time drags on, their call for transparency is getting louder. For granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you first responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for nine.
Cobb County family hoped today would be the day that they would finally see police body cam video after their 17 year old was shot and killed by police in Cobb County in July. But tonight they tell 11 Alive's Naima Abdullahi they are still waiting and their calls for transparency are growing louder. It's been more than 90 days since 17 year old Vincent Truitt was shot and killed by Cobb County police. Since then, his family says they've had more questions than answers. His name was Vincent Truitt. His family says he was an ambitious student, an active church member, a loving son, and now truly missed. 18 hours passed before we were notified. My child died alone. You know, it's a truly heartbreaking case where you have a young man uh, who, by all extensive purposes, was a very good young man. Attorney Gerald Griggs says the 17-year-old died after being shot in the back twice by police back in July. Here's what the family was initially told. Investigators say a Cobb County police officer spotted a stolen vehicle. GBI says after a traffic stop, the teen got out of the car and ran, but at some point he was shot by police. But the family says investigators have given conflicting information about whether the teen had a gun. I don't really know how you could justify this shooting. And that's why I'm very curious at the fact that after 90 some odd days of having this video, the video has not been made available to the family. Gerald Griggs says that in a private meeting with the family this week, the Cobb County District Attorney says that there should be no issue why the GBI cannot show that video to the family. We asked GBI about it today. GBI did not directly answer our questions about releasing the video, but said it hopes to wrap up the investigation in the next few weeks. So far now, the family still waits. We need to clear up the misinformation and hold accountable whoever's responsible for this shooting. In addition to the video, the family is also asking for medical records from the hospital where the teen was taken after he was shot. A study by the World Health Organization has found that the antiviral drug remdesivir, the same one that President Trump and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie took after testing positive for COVID-19, did not reduce mortality rates in a large group of patients. But the study of more than 11,000 people in 30 countries has concluded it has little impact. NBC's Willem Marks reports from London. Over the course of the last several months, there have been several studies that have suggested that remdesivir, an antiviral treatment that essentially works by hindering the ability of coronavirus to replicate inside our systems, could be effective at accelerating hospital discharges, meaning that people spend less time in hospital if they take it. This latest research, though, from the World Health Organization, part of the solidarity trial across 11,000 patients, 30 countries, 400 hospitals during the course of a six-month test period, has indicated that is not the case. Interim results from the trial now show that the other two drugs in the trial, remdesivir and interferon, have little or no effect in preventing death from COVID-19 or reducing time in hospital. For the moment, the corticosteroid dexamethasone is still the only therapeutic shown to be effective against COVID-19. Almost 3,000 patients were treated with remdesivir and there was no statistically significant difference in the number of days that they spent inside a hospital, nor indeed in the mortality rate. The airline industry among the hardest hit during the pandemic, with millions of Americans still avoiding air travel. Now new findings about the risk of exposure on planes and how to protect yourself best could calm the fear of flying. Here's NBC's Kristen Dahlgren. Tonight, a new study may calm fears about flying. Researchers examined how simulated virus particles move through the aircraft, both in flight and on the ground, conducting 300 tests in empty United Airlines planes over six months. Using both masked and unmasked mannequins, researchers released more than 180 million particles into the cabin. That would be equivalent to the number of particles produced by thousands of human coughs. The Department of Defense report found when masked, not even 1% of the particles made it to the nearby passengers. 99.7% were filtered out within six minutes as fresh outside air cycled into the plane, made even cleaner by hospital-grade HEPA filters. In comparison, researchers say it typically takes the average home 90 minutes to cycle similar particles from the air. The risk of getting coronavirus on a plane is probably less than 
you know, any other indoor space that I can think of. While the study couldn't take into account passengers moving around the cabin, turning to talk to neighbors or eating, researchers say wearing a mask is the most effective protection. Be smart, take precautions, follow the rules. Tonight, many flyers breathing a sigh of relief that the air they're breathing on planes may be less risky than once feared. Last night, President Trump and the Democrat Joe Biden went head to head without ever being face to face. They took part in competing town halls on different networks on a night that would have been the second presidential debate. The president backed out of a virtual debate after his COVID diagnosis raised safety concerns. Last night, he addressed his health on NBC with Savannah Guthrie. Do you take a test every single day? No, no, but I take a lot of tests. Okay, and you don't know if you took a test the day of the debate? Uh, uh, possibly I did, possibly I didn't. The pandemic dominated the conversation at both the president's town hall and Joe Biden's town hall on ABC with George Stephanopoulos. Biden addressed whether he would trust a vaccine approved under the Trump administration. If the body of scientists say that this is what is ready to be done, and there, it's, it's been tested, it's gone through the three phases. Yes, I would take it, I'd encourage people to take it. We want to mention the president committed to a peaceful transfer of power if he does lose the election next month. After telling white supremacist groups to stand back and stand by in the first debate during his town hall, he said he denounced those groups. A new poll of Georgia voters showing that Joe Biden has a razor thin lead on President Trump with less than three weeks until Election Day, according to the Survey USA poll for us at 11 Alive. The former vice president now leading 48 to 46 percent, joined by Chuck Todd right now, moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, it's, it's not just our poll. We have seen others showing that Joe Biden is leading in Georgia and, and Democrats are leading mm -hmm. or they're close to leading in two of the Senate races. Is it going to be a disappointment for the party if Democrats don't win at least something statewide in Georgia? I think so. If they don't win one of the three, either carry carry the state in the presidential or one of the two Senate seats, uh, I think I think there will be this sort of um, it will feel a little, and I think then it will give Georgia a little Lucy in the football mindset to, to Democrats that, that, you know what, maybe it is just out of reach. They're not quite there. I'll tell you, though, I'm becoming increasingly bullish on, um, I used to be of the mindset that if I had to say which of these Senate seats the Democrats have the best shot at, I'd say, oh, Ossoff over Purdue, it's just cleaner, it's simpler. Now, you know, what I can't figure out is how, how either Loeffler or Collins appeal to voters outside the base when one of them comes up against Warnock. And I, they have raced so far to the right, i just trying to picture. So the, if you were to ask me which of the three do Democrats, I think, have the best shot in, I'm getting more bullish every day on, the, on that Senate special. There's no way we could have imagined last December when Governor Kemp appointed Kelly Leffler uh, to that Senate seat that had been held by Johnny Isaacson for so long in an effort to try to appeal to suburban Atlanta, moderate Mitt Romney kind of Republicans, <laughs> that we would see her pulling up yesterday in Levi's, uh, a ball cap, a Humvee with Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, for a <laughs> news conference. It was a surreal sort of sight to see that yesterday on our local news. When politicians try to transform and run as something they're not, eventually voters catch on and this transformation she's trying to make i mean it, it, you laid it out she was she was the she was appointed to be the republican that reached out to chamber of commerce republicans she was not to be the republican that reached out to QAnon republicans and it is just again i look at this and i'm i am trying to picture how an eventual republican candidate be it collins or leffler pivots back to the general after as far right as they're running right now in this primary. Meet the press with Chuck Todd, 10 a.m. Chuck, thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. Go Braves. You got it. Uh, it is feeling like fall as we head into the weekend. Those temperatures are dropping. Those breezes were blowing and the colors are changing. Jason Bonner, one of our 11 Alive storm trackers in Hiawassee, posting this picture of the changing colors on Spaniard Mountain. So coming up, what your fall foliage forecast looks like for the weekend. It is the moment you've been waiting for. Team 1-1, best high school football highlights are coming up.
YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote. Our unofficial ballot drop box is popping up in some areas of the United States. That's a viral claim circulating online and one our Verify team is looking into. Here is Jason Puckett. You may have seen claims like these, that Republicans in California were creating, quote, fake drop boxes for voters. We're verifying, is this really happening and is it legal? Our sources are publications by the California Republican Party, the Fresno election website, and a statement from the California Secretary of State. Now, archived pages show that the state's GOP party set out 12 different drop box locations in Fresno County, but none of those 12 show up on the county's list of official drop box locations. Put simply, they weren't officially placed by the County Board of Elections. So the claim that California Republicans were creating unofficial drop boxes, verified. So is this legal? Well, there's debate over that question. Republicans in the California State Legislature and even U.S. Representative Ken Calvert have said they are acting within the state's laws. They see these as an extension of California's ballot harvesting laws, which make it legal for a third party to pick up and drop off ballots. But California Secretary of State and Attorney General sent a cease and desist letter to the California Republican Party saying non-official drop boxes don't comply with state law governing ballot collection activities. 
California law does have requirements for having your ballot delivered by a third party. Namely, you have to write their name on your ballot, what their relationship is with you, and then they have to sign the outside of the envelope. Unofficial ballot boxes don't meet this standard. Now, this will likely become a larger legal battle that will have to be determined in the courts. As of now, these unofficial ballot boxes have only been reported in California. But election officials do say to make sure your ballot is definitely counted, go ahead and drop it off at an official drop off location or in the mail. You can find a list of those locations on your local election board website. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. An Indianapolis nurse enjoying drinks off duty at a bar used his training to save a man's life. Julia Moffitt shares how the nurse saw a man acting unusual and then realized he was not breathing and had no pulse. His quick actions being credited with saving this troubled man's life. Corey Pereira is a nurse and works in the emergency department at Community Hospital East. He says he likes the challenge of never knowing what's coming. One minute you could just be kind of hanging out and, you know, helping out other co-workers do things and the next minute you're running through an emergency coming through the front door or EMS is bringing somebody in. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of exhilarating at mm -hmm. times. During a recent night out at a bar in Brownsburg with his brother, Corey certainly wasn't prepared for what was coming. Just met my brother out for a night of drinks and um, just happened this guy like walked by us and uh, he kind of had this look on his face, but we didn't really think anything much of it just because, you know, we're in a bar and that's kind of expected. Everybody's there having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he took 10, 15 steps to the left of us and then he just collapsed. Corey noticed the man was not blinking or breathing and jumped in. Uh, I've seen this look before and that's when I just kind of clicked in the nurse mode and checked the pulse and checked respirations. And, you know, unfortunately he had none and I just started unfolding them, you know into the perfect uh, CPR position, started CPR on him, and then fortunately as I got him back. So he basically had died? Yes, ma'am. He's no pulse, no respirations, just gone. Because of his quick action and training, he was able to revive the man just as police and paramedics arrived. Corey's pretty humble. The hospital probably would never have even known about his life-saving event if it hadn't been from an officer who was also at the bar and witnessed what he had done, writing, Mr. Perea should be commended for his quick actions. With today's climate and concern over the COVID pandemic, it was reassuring to see Mr. Perea not hesitate and quickly reverted to his training. I always admire how responsive my nurse friends are. They just jump in like that. It is really, really cool. Well, we're going to see a cool weekend for sure. The cooler temperatures are already presenting themselves. So chilly nights, cool, crisp days. It's when you get the sunny, cool days and the cold nights that you start to see the real color in the mountains. And we're starting to see it right now, Scott. Anna in Union County posting this beautiful picture of a cabin in the woods that are changing around it. Really nice. So if you're going to head up and look at the fall color, this is the forecast you can expect. We kind of picked the Blue Ridge Ella J area to create this forecast that you're about ready to see here. Starting out in the mid 30s early tomorrow morning. So it will be chilly for sure. Dress warmly. And then during the afternoon, you can probably take some of those layers off. We should hit 61 degrees with sunshine. A little breezy at times and gusts up to 15. And just just a little warmer on Sunday. So temperatures will be about 41 degrees to start and then into the mid 60s in the mountains as we head into Sunday afternoon. But a very nice pattern, tremendous visibility where you feel like you can just see forever. And that's because this front scoured out all those particulates and humidity, pushed it down into Florida. And so we're seeing that dry, cool air move in behind that front. And that's taking our temperatures way down tonight as that dry air settles in. So things are really humid this past week, even though our temperatures weren't out of control. It was sticky at times and we're not going to feel sticky at all this weekend. It's going to be downright arid. So right now we're at 47 in Blairsville. We're down to 46 in Dalton, 49 in Carrollton, 55 in Atlanta. So we're running 14 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday in Atlanta and in Canton, 18 degrees cooler in Dalton, almost 20 degrees colder than we were just 24 hours ago. So that indicates just how chilly this air is. So the fall color is showing up here in Atlanta as well and some of the trees here and there, like a patchwork quilt. Temperatures getting down into the 40s overnight here. So there is going to be a chilly start. So grab your sweater when you head out the door. You might want to put one on your dog if it's one of those very short hair little bitties. 
uh, in the morning, 44 degrees by lunchtime, 60. And then uh, I think your dog is going to enjoy the weather all day long. We have green paw prints here. No problem. No storms to dodge or anything like that. Won't be a little breezy at times yet tonight. Winds gusting up to 15 miles per hour off and on throughout the day and then again on Sunday morning. So that'll make it feel a bit chillier. Lows getting down close to freezing in Blairsville. So there may be a little frost here in wind protected spots in North Georgia come tomorrow morning. And the feels like temperature is even a little cooler than that. So as we head into the next few days, a couple of cool ones and then we'll start warming it right back up once again. So here's a seven day outlook. It'll be chilly in the next couple of mornings and then we'll get into the 60s during the afternoon. 70s will be back on Monday with an 11 on the wasometer and then a few clouds roll in next week, but we stay dry at least until Friday when we have a 30% chance of rain. Friday night, Team 1-1, one, one. glad to have you aboard tonight. Nice and cool outside, so we go with some big region matchups. Never too early to start thinking about the postseason, the playoffs just around the corner. So we get started with our friends from Born to Compete. It is Grayson and South Gwinnett, both schools coming off very big victories. How will these neighboring rivals fare? Grayson, the quick pass to Jamal Haynes, slips a tackle, fights his way all the way to the red zone. Grace and then the handoff to Phil Maffa. Keep an eye on him here as Maffa is quick shotgun formation. Here they are. And the hand up right off the gut. Nothing fancy about that. Grayson takes an early lead and they would absolutely crush tonight. They would crush South Gwinnett 42 to 7 is the final region opener for two Fulton County rivals. It is Cam Newton's Westlake taking on Langston Hughes and first possession of the second half for Westlake's RJ Johnson to Jacoby Gilbert gets by the defense untouched scores lines up 20 to 7 ensuing possession for the Panthers the keeper for the X-Man Xavier Smith stripped by Lockett Horace Lockett the fumble recovered by Avion Terrell a scoop and score for Westlake now it's 26 to 7. Onto the fourth quarter, Panthers running out of time. Prentice Air Noland is looking for Robert C.J. Lockhart the third, who will slip by his defender. And Langston Hughes all of a sudden is back into this one. And they had a chance. They got it down to five, but Westlake is your winner. 26 to 21 is the final. From our friends at Georgia Public Broadcasting, Parkview taking on Newton. And Jared Brown from Parkview finding an open hole here and keep an eye on him. He is the guy in the orange and they are freezing for a moment. They are trying to take a very long play here. <laughs> it's Parkview 35 to 7. We'll get back to that at another time, ladies and gentlemen. Over. All right, we head south to Stars Mill. There were no delays there. They're four and one this season. Northgate two and two. And it is Greg Joseph. He sneaks around the pile. Stars Mill up seven nothing. Northgate struggling with turnovers. The fumble recovery by Micaiah Schraber. And then into the third quarter, Northgate the drive stop on the fumble recovered by Joseph again. So we got 906 left in the game. Connor Mark for Stars Mill kicking the winning field goal 10 7 stars mill is your winner that is it for now more highlights coming up on 11 alive in just a few minutes that's it for sports we'll wrap things up right after the break in times of great uncertainty some things become more clear the things we take for granted the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, 
and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for. Well, the cool down has commenced and our temperatures will be getting down to around 44 degrees here in Atlanta overnight. We'll be in the 30s in the North Georgia mountains and maybe even a little frost showing up in those wind protected spots up there. Uh, should be around 66 by tomorrow afternoon with plenty of sunshine. A wee bit warmer on Sunday and then we'll be back in the 70s on Monday with an 11 alive day and a mostly dry week ahead. We're going to have to wait all the way till Friday to get any chance of rain. Samantha, thank you. Thank you for watching 11 Alive Prime Time. Switch over to 11 Alive now for up late in our favorite anchors. Contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. 
the things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick.